What's going on? How we feeling? Carlos Correa just made himself the most hated man in Los Angeles. Dodgers country is going to have a fucking field day with this guy. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Smarter Baseball, where we deep dive into everything going on throughout Major League Baseball. If you enjoy the content and want to support the channel, like the video, subscribe to the page, and turn on notifications so that you can help the channel grow and you stay up to date on all of our content. So after being big players in the Aaron Judge sweepstakes and coming up short, the San Francisco Giants just swung big signing shortstop Carlos Correa, the 28-year-old, to a 13-year, $350 million deal. That comes out to $26.9 million AAV and is going to take him from his age 28 through his age 40 seasons, from 2023 all the way through 2035, because this deal comes with a full no-trade clause and no opt-outs. They are tied to the hip for as long as Correa is probably going to be playing baseball professionally. I mean, maybe he goes the Jason Worth route and just shows up to beer league softball games and drops absolute nukes. But while he's getting paid, he's probably going to be doing it in San Francisco. Which, let's just take a second to look at how we even got here. So Correa came up with the Astros was part of the team during the whole sign-stealing scandal where they were playing the Dodgers in the World Series. So now they feel like he's a part of them getting cheated out of a World Series title. So they refuse to look at bringing him in because of how that would look. So what does he do? He goes and signs with the Dodgers' biggest rival and will now play them for 13 years. You can't make this shit up. But a lot of people get swept up in this whole sign stealing thing with the Astros and don't really take a look at who the player actually is. So Correa threw out his career eight years. He's been a 279, 357, 479 hitter for an 836 OPS, 155 home runs. He's got a 129 OPS plus, 130 WRC plus, racked up 39 and a half B war and 31.3 F war. The dude has been one of, if not the best hitting shortstops in baseball pretty much since he came up. He pairs that good bat with a good plate approach as well. Doesn't strike out a ton, gets a good amount of walks because he's up there being patient. He's not chasing, doesn't swing a whole lot, and doesn't really whiff. So he's sitting on his pitches and willing to let them go if it's not something that he can put a good swing on. And when he does put a good swing on it, the dude can do some damage. I mean, we see that reflected in his ISO, the exit velo. He barrels it up a good amount and is gonna hit the ball hard, resulting in quite a few home runs. He balances this pretty well though and maintains that higher average by not hitting the ball primarily in the air. He actually sticks more to ground balls and line drives going middle away for the most part. So you would think he's a bigger power hitting shortstop. He's going to pull the ball in the air. Pretty much does the exact opposite of that. Over his career, he's got pretty good base running numbers actually. But the majority of that, the vast majority of that, came in his first two seasons. So you're not really going to get a whole lot of that anymore out of him at this point. Now all of this has led him to being the 2015 Rookie of the Year and earning two All-Star nods. But let's take a look at this season and see why he earned this contract. Now Correa was actually in this exact same position last offseason where people knew what he could do when he's on the field. But he'd gained a little bit of a reputation for being kinda injury prone. So teams were hesitant to give him this kind of a long-term contract. He took a one-year flyer with the Twins and in 136 games hit 291, 366, 467 for an 834 OPS, 22 home runs, a 140 OPS plus and WRC plus, and had 5.4 B war and 4.4 F war. 
Now, despite trying to go out and earn this kind of big money contract, he didn't let that affect his approach too much. The strikeouts and walks stayed relatively the same because he still wasn't chasing, still wasn't swinging a whole lot, keeping his whiffs down because he's just one of the more patient batters in baseball. He's gonna make you throw him something good because he knows he can hit it well. Now on a surface level, some of his power numbers took a dip this season. The ISO, homers per fly ball, and home run percentage were all down a little bit this year. Despite the fact that his exit velo was right at his career average, his barrel percentage and hard hit were actually noticeably above. But when you take into consideration he was hitting in Minnesota instead of Houston this year with those Crawford boxes out and left that he was loving having out there, you can make that case to where like, okay, he's still hitting the ball as hard, if not harder. He just didn't see quite the same results because of being in a different stadium. Now we still saw those 20 plus doubles and home runs this year because he increased his launch angle just a little bit, about one and a half percent, and saw more fly balls this season and went from going with that middle away approach to actually pulling the ball and staying up the middle more this season. And then, like I said, on the base pass, you're just really not going to get a whole lot from him at this point. He's not really trying to steal bases or take those extra bases. So offensively, what you're going to get from him is what he's going to do in the batter's box, not when he leaves it. Now, defensively, it's a little bit of a different story. Because according to Fangraph's advanced fielding numbers, out of 22 qualified shortstops, his defensive runs saved and UZR per 150 were right above about in the middle but his outs and runs above average and his total defensive rating were all ranked 19th in the league so showing that he's more towards the bottom in terms of being one of the defensive shortstops and when we double check everything with his baseball savant percentile ratings this year it pretty much backs up everything that we've said about him as a player so far we know he's got that power and he's one of the better offensive players in baseball. We see that pretty much with all of these rankings. Looking at his approach to the strikeouts could use improvement, but they're not bad. He gets his walks pretty good at whiffing, not chasing that kind of stuff. The sprint speed is not quite there. That might kind of play into some of this the runs saved the outs above average all of that stuff defensively he's just not going to cover a ton of ground out there but where he can make up for it defensively is he's got a pretty strong arm so if he can get to the ball he's probably going to get it over there pretty quickly to beat out most runners so like we said the giants were in on aaron judge they were they were all in and after that didn't work they were already in line to make a big move. So it's not super surprising that they would make another big move and bring in a guy like Correa. But more specifically, their shortstops in 2022 slash 219, 289, 333 for a 622 OPS with 10 home runs. They didn't strike out a ton, but didn't get a lot of walks, didn't come with a lot of power, and their WRC plus of 78 pretty much backs up the 1.4 F war that they had that ranked them 25th in baseball. Now defensively, their defensive runs saved and UZR per 150 were both ranked 22nd, but their outs above average, runs above average, and total defensive rating were all 7th according to fan graphs. So bringing in Correa, you're gonna trade off a little bit of this defensive regression for that massive offensive improvement that you're gonna get over this and he's probably not gonna end up sticking it short long term I mean he'll probably play there for a handful of years and then as he gets later into his career he's gonna move over to third base or second or something where he's gonna play out a little bit better defensively and if you can sign a player that your biggest rival absolutely fucking hates, then you count that as a win-win. So now comment down below. What do you guys think about this deal? How's it going to play out over the life of this contract? Drop a comment down below and let me know.
Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, like the video, subscribe to the page, turn on notifications so that you can help the channel grow and reach more baseball fans, and you don't miss out on any future content the moment it drops. I hope you enjoyed. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next one.